Hello everyone and welcome to another random bits and pieces segment from my brain and today sit a while for we are playing some more franchise Aki Manager 6 as part of the Ottawa Senators. So today is February so as um, is my habit I have made um, some contract extension offers to the players that I am willing to bring back uh, on players that have an expiring contract. Uh, lots of depth is getting another contract and then there's two players we're gonna need to talk about. So Stefan Dacosta getting another uh, contract. Joe Thornton uh, barely asks uh, for a raise. I think it's like 400,000 raise. So he's coming back. Ansi Niemi like 100,000 rays or 200,000 uh, rays, so he's gonna be coming back for uh, the backup duties. Zeleno Shara actually asked for a pay cut uh, so of about a million, so I, I jumped on that. Uh, Datsyuk actually wanted about a million more, so I'm kind of breaking even between those two. And then we have Doug Evans, Maroon Griba, Needredder. Uh, Dave Thurzinski that are needing new contracts. So that leaves me with two players uh, who are not getting another contract and both of them is because they do not want to negotiate with me. Uh, they don't like me or something. The first one is Mike Fisher. Uh, Mike Fisher is 30 years old. I was gonna bring him back to put, you know, keep playing on my third line or something like that, but he does not want to uh, negotiate with me, so I've put him on the trade block. And the other one, and it saddens me a little bit, uh, is Tyler Sege, uh, with whom I'm I picked up right at the start of the season on waivers, so he does not want to negotiate with me. So I've put him on the trade block as well. So I'm gonna try to have those guys shipped out before the trade deadline since they do not want to be back and see if I can get something that would be useful to me and that actually wants to play for a team that has won countless Stanley Cups in a row. So some players apparently don't want that. All right, so before we get started with February, we are at top of the Eastern Conference, uh, four points uh, ahead of the Penguins. We still have two injuries, although Matt Onwick is about to come back and Anton Volchenkov is still out for a couple months. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get started here. So it starts today on the road in New Jersey against the Devils. So the Devils are 24, 22, and 3, and that's good for 8 in the East. So they've been doing it a little bit better. As we know, last year it's been pretty tough for them. Uh, we are 1-0 against the Devils this season. It was a 2-1 victory. All right, so February is officially underway, so go sends go. And we are sending Brian Elliott in net, and they are going, of course, with Martin Brodeur. And we lost the first game of February, 4-3 to three in overtime, slash shootout. Yeah, it was in the shootout. Uh, so we outshot the Devils, 59-18. to 18. Mark Streit was the first. Now, keep in mind, Mark Streit does not play for us anymore. He plays for the Devils. So he showed us that we shouldn't have let him go. He got three assists as the first star. Brooks Like was the second star with two assists. And Brian Gianta was the third star with two goals. So the Devils scored first in the first period, then we tied the game up in the second with Eric Carson scoring from Brooks like and Joe Thornton. It was tied at one, but then the Devils took the lead again, and then we tied the game again with Jason Spezza scoring from Andre Mazaros. It was tied at two after two. And in the third period, uh, pretty late actually, we took the the lead for the first time in the game. It was Joe Thornton's 25th from Marion Olsen Brooks like. It was 3 to Sens, but less than a minute later, the Devils tied the game and sent that to overtime where nobody scored. And then in the shootout, Brian Giantos, the only one who scored. We had Jason Spitz up, Pavel Datsyuk, and Eric Carson not score. So we lost that one 4-3. So get a point, but yeah. Right, so we have a lot of news because we have all of those guys that signed. 
Right, memorable game for Duncan Keat, who had three goals and an assist against Columbus. Pretty good game indeed. Scott Hartnell extends his goal streak to five games with a goal and two assists against Calgary. Alex Ovechkin extends his point streak to 17 games with two goals and an assist against Montreal. Eugene Melnick is still very happy with my work. We went 7-2-2 two two last month. Alright, and then Matt Unwick is about to come back. And then we have everybody that signed contracts. So we're just going to go ahead and delete everything. There you go. Alright, and uh, we don't have a whole lot of time to feel sorry for ourselves about after that loss, uh, because we are back home and we are going to be facing the Detroit Red Wings. So the times where the Red Wings had so-so season seem to be over. They are having another good season. They are 31-16-2, and two. Uh, so we haven't played them so far this season, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at their lineup, see what it's all about over there. Alright, so Ryan Klo is not going to play that game. He is hurt and on injured reserve. And Johan Franzen is also not going to be playing this game. He is suspended. So in net, Detroit has Jimmy Howard and Curry Sanford. Uh, Curtis Sanford, sorry. That's the right name. On D, we have Kevin Dahlman, Jonathan Erickson, Alec Martinez, Derek Englund, Steve Wagner, Ryan Caldwell, Carl Gunnarsson, and Jacob Kindle. Yeah, the after Lidstrom era on D in Detroit is a little rough. Uh, that D has a couple okay defensemen, but it's not all that great. <coughs> Then up front, it's David Booth, Johan Franzen, Ritola Stillman, Chipchura, El Matias, Nyquist, Sheehan, Alfredson, Mersak, Hodler, and Zetterberg. Alright, so let's see if we can beat the wings. All right, so Jimmy Howard is going to be in net for Detroit, and we are going to Ansi Niemi. And we won 2-1, to one. not an easy game. And we barely outshot the Red Wings, 24-22. to 22. Look at those uh, realistic numbers there. We are not used to that. And the first star of the game was the Dan O'Shara with an assist. Kyle Chipchoy was a second star with an assist as well. And Pavel Datsuk was a third star with a goal. 16,588 people in attendance for this game. So in the first period, we saw Nikita Filatov open up the scoring from Patrick Eves and Eric Carlson. Uh, but then Detroit tied the game before the end of the period. So it was tied at one after one. Then in the second period, Pavel Datsuk scored short-handed from Petris Bergeron and Zdeno Shara. It was 2-1 Sands at that point, and nobody else scored in this game, so 2-1 was the final score. And after that game, uh, Johan Frenzen is going to be back in the lineup for Detroit. Right, Brandon Yip and Tommy Pettinen are available. And here we have, there, there was no stopping Daniel Sedin, who had three goals and an assist against Phoenix. Right, and Matt Unwick is uh, not hurt anymore, which means that we are going to send Brian Lee back down. So... Unwick back on the lineup. Lee back down. Alright, and we are going to hit the road again. So we're going to have a stop in Long Island before we go on our Western Canadian trip. 
Uh, Steve Valiquet is available. He's been in Carolina for a while as the backup there. A great night for Phil Kessel in Boston. He had a hat trick against Dallas. Dynamic passing leads to Products of Night for James Neal in that same game. He had four assists. All right, Sidney Crosby extends his goal streak to five games with a goal and an assist against the Sabres. And Alex Ovechkin's point streak ended at 17 games. He was held scoreless against the Tampa Bay Lightning. All right, so we are in New York to face the Islanders. So the Islanders are not doing great at all. They are 18, 30, and 3. And that's good for 13 in the East. We are 1-1 one one against the Islanders this season. All right, so back in the net for us is Brian Elliott. And Roberto Luongo is going to face us. Actually, uh, it was... Uh, what's his... What's his face that uh, that beat us? God, I have a, a blank. I know I know his name, I just Ah what is his name? Rick De Pietro, God. Oof what a blank. Uh, and we won 6-1. to one. So yeah, it was Rick Pietro that had like that crazy game where the Islanders beat us, but uh, they didn't decide to go back to him. And we made them pay with a 6-1 to one win for us. Uh, we outshot the Islanders 52-15. to 15. Jason Spezza was the first star of the game. He had two goals and an assist. Eric Carson was a second star with a goal and an assist. And Ryan Whitney was a third star with a goal and an assist as well. So we took a 3-0 lead into the first period. Uh, first was Jason Spezza with his 30th from Chris Kelly. Then Eric Carson from Alexander Radlov and Patrick Eves. And then Jason Spezza from Ryan Whitney and Pavel Datsyuk. 3-0 sends after one. Then in the second period, we have the malcontent Mike Fisher scoring a goal from Alex Pietrangelo and Eric Carlson. Then Alexander Radulov from Jason Spezza and Pavel Datsyuk, and it's 5 nothing after 2. Then the Islanders scored late in the third period, made it 5-1, to one, and then we squeezed in another goal. It was Ryan Whitney scoring his fifth from Matt Unwick and Petrus Bergeron, and 6-1 to one was the final score in that game. Oh, and da Drew Doughty is day-to-day. -day. Growing soreness. Right, and we are going all the way at the end of the continent to go play in Vancouver. Alright, so Petri Conciola and Sheldon Brookbank are available on waivers. Feels like it's the seventh time this season that, that Brookbank is put on waivers. Uh, Phil Kessel extends his goal streak to five games. He had a goal against the Sharks. Alex Tage has achieved 500 assists um, with an assist against Anaheim. So Alex Tage is now 31 years old and he is still a two and a half star player, so still capable, capable of playing. Matt Niskanen extends his point straight to 12 games with an assist against the Flyers. Nikolai Bibulin played in his 1,000th game in his career. Uh, and he won against the Wild. So 38 years old, Nikolai Bibulin, one-star goaltender. So he's not too, uh, too strong anymore. He's, he's regressing. All right, so we have that. And then Nicholas Backstrom signed an extension in Washington for three years. They don't say for how much. All right, so Drew Doughty is hurt, as we know. All right, it's just day-to-day, -day, so we won't worry about it too much. All right, Sidney Crosby extends his goal streak to six games with a goal and an assist against the Washington Capitals. And that was 12 straight point 
uh, straight games with a point from. Oh, and Patrick Kane also signed an extension, uh, of course, with the Blackhawks. So three years, 16.5 million total. All right, and we are going to be playing in Vancouver against the Canucks. So we did play the Canucks earlier this season, and we beat them 6-1. Uh, right now, the Canucks are 21-26-6, so it's a little tough in Vancouver. If I remember correctly, they really don't have a very good team, aside from the Sedin Twins and Corey Schneider in net, they really don't have much. So Brian Elliott is in net for us, and Corey Schneider is going to be in net for Vancouver. And we won 6-1 to one again, so yeah, there's some continuity here. Alright, we outshot the Canucks 52-11. to 11. Joe Thornton was the first star of the game. He had two goals and two assists. Sam Gagne was the second star with two assists. And Andre Mazaros was the third star with a goal and an assist. Marion also opened up the scoring in the first period from Joe Thornton and Andre Mazaros. And it was 1-0 Sands after 1. Then in the second period... Uh, Jason Spezza scored on the power play from Joe Thornton and Alexander Radulov, and it was 2 nothing Sands at that point. Then I saw a name that, you know, grabbed my attention, which is Luc Bourdon. And, of course, if you follow Aki or if you're, you know, you're a Vancouver fan or something, uh, uh, Luc Bourdon, uh, during an off-season, got into a motorcycle accident and lost his life. So... He never really played or anything like that, so I guess uh, he's there in the game right now. Alright, and in the third period we scored a whole bunch of goals. So Joe Thornton scored on the power play from Eric Carlson and Jason Spezza. Then uh, Carlson scored short-handed from Mike Fisher and Sam Gagne. Then Andre Mazaros from Sam Gagne and Patrick Eves. And then Joe Thornton from Zdeno Shar and Marion Osa. It was 6 nothing, And then with 3.31 left in the game, Vancouver finally scored a goal to prevent Brian Elliott from getting a shot. Shout out. So six to one was the victory. All right, and Menton's Markov suspended. Of course, it's Daniel Markov. He is suspended for three games. And Petteri Nokelainen in Phoenix is suspended as well. He's gonna miss five games. Alright, and now I kinda want to see. I kind of wanted to see Luc Bourdon, uh, how much potential they gave him and everything. So they gave him a star and a half potential. That's interesting. All right, and we are now going to be moving to Calgary to play against the Flames. So Brandon Yip on waivers again, and Dan Ellis on waivers as well. Uh, Sidney Crosby extends his goal streak to seven games with a goal and an assist against Columbus. That was 13 straight games with a point. Uh, speaking of Pittsburgh, Ryan Malone is back from suspension, back in the lineup over there. And then we have um, Jagger that signed an extension with Pittsburgh. They don't say for how many years. They say that it's 5.62 per year. But they don't say for how many years the extension is. Alright, so we are going to play in Calgary against the Flames. Flames are also not doing all that great. They are 20, 29, and 6. Uh, we are 1 0 against Calgary this season. It was a 3 to 1 win at home. Now let's see if we can beat them on the road so we have Brian Elliott in net uh, for us and Andy Craig Anderson is in net for the Flames and we won 2-1 to one, so 
Anderson played a pretty good game, but didn't get much offensive support in that one. Uh, we outshot Calgary 34-25. to Ryan Whitney was the first star. He had a goal and an assist. Uh... Brett Sutter was a second star with a goal, and Petrus Bergeron was a third star with a goal as well. Alright, so nobody scored in the first period, and in the second period we have Petrus Bergeron scoring shorthanded from Ryan Whitney, and it was 1-0 Sands after 2. There was also a fight between Zdeno Schar and Mark Giordano, so pretty, uh, pretty manly affair. And in the third period, the Flames tied the game at 1 pretty late, but then Ryan Whitney scored the game winner from Zdeno Scher, and it was 2-1, to one, and there was very little time left for Calgary to tie the game, and they didn't. Phil Kessel extends his goal streak to 6 games. He had a goal and an assist against Montreal. Matt Niskanen extends his point streak to 13 games with an assist against Phoenix. And that was 8 straight games with an assist for him. Alright, and Drew Doughty is probably going to be recovered here pretty soon. Alright, and now we are heading to Edmonton. We're going to play the Oilers here in a few games, a few days. Sidney Crosby extends his goal streak to eight games with a goal and two assists against the Kings. So Crosby is back up and producing a lot. I mentioned in the last episode that he was kind of not uh, scoring at his usual pace, and I guess I woke him up. I shouldn't have said anything. Uh, Sidney Crosby extends his point streak to 14 games. Alright. Oh, there's been a trade between the Kings and the Maple Leafs. So... The Kings are trading Keith Ballard and Oleg Seprikin to the Maple Leafs for Brendan Bell and Sam Carrick. Interesting. Interesting. Brendan Bell played very briefly for the Sens in real life, and I, he was wearing number nine, and I always thought it was a weird number for a defenseman. You don't see many defensemen wearing that number. But anyway, uh, Matt Niskanen extends his point streak to 14 with an assist against the Blackhawks. And that was 9 straight games with an assist for him. Sidney Crosby extends his point streak to 15 games with an assist against the Islanders. Alright, and we are <clears throat> in Edmonton to play against the Oilers. They are 25, 25, and 4, so barely playing for 500 over there. And we have won against Edmonton, 3-1 uh, at home. Let's see if we can beat them on the road. Alright, so it's going to be Brian Elliott in net for us, and Devon Dubnik in net for the orders. And we won 3-2 in overtime, so they made us work for it. Um, we outshot Edmonton 39-23, Chris Kelly was a first star, he had an assist. Devon Dubnik was a second star with 37 saves, and Jordan Eberle was a third star with a goal. So Edmonton scored first in the first period, then Sam Gagne tied the game from Mike Fisher and Chris Kelly. It was tied at 1 after 1. Then in the second period, Pavel Datsyuk scored his 20th of the season on the power play from Zdeno Oshar, gave us a 2-1 lead. And then the Oilers tied the game again, so it was tied at 2 after 2. And nobody scored in the third period, and nobody scored in overtime, and that went in the shootout. So Brandon Bocinski scored for the Oilers, and then we had Carlson and Datsyuk score for us. 
and 3 to 2 was the final score with us getting the victory. Oh, I guess that's a nice way for Pavel Datsuk to celebrate his thousandth game uh, with the winner in the shootout. He also had a goal in regulation to celebrate that. So, 32 years old, Pavel Datsuk, 1000 games played, still a five star player. Alright, so Leo Komarov in Toronto is suspended. He's going to miss five games. Martin Erat has a strong game in Nashville. He had three goals and an assist against Colorado. And Drew Doughty is back. He is not hurt anymore. Alright, so after the long trip, we are going back home where we're going to face the Islanders again. Matt Niskanen extends his point streak to 15 games. He had an assist against Columbus. And that's 10 straight with an assist for him. Daniel Markov is back from suspension in Edmonton. Yarmir Jagger extends his point streak to 12 games with two goals against the Rangers. And Sidney Crosby extends his point streak to 16 games with two assists in that same game. All right, and then, ooh, Henry Clunquist signed an extension with the Rangers. A four-year extension, 5.87 million per season. All right, so the Islanders are in town. Uh, they are not doing much better than they were last time we played them. They are 21-32-3. That's good for 13th in the East. And we are now 2-1 against the Islanders this season. All right, so Rick DiPietro, there you go. It's a lot easier for me to find your name when it's right there on the screen. And then Brian Elliott in net for us. Ah, you didn't beat us this time. We beat you 5-1. to one. <clears throat> We outshot the Islanders 53-21. to 21. Pavel Datsyuk was the first star of the game. He had three goals and an assist. Jason Spezza was the second star with three assists. And Petrus Bergeron was the third star with three assists as well. 16,424 people in attendance for this game. All right, so Pavel Datsyuk opened up the scoring in the first period. That was a power play goal assisted by Bergeron, and it was 1-0 Sens after 1. Then in the second period, we saw Zelen Oshar score his fifth from Pavel Datsyuk and Jason Spezza, and it was 2-0 after 2. And then in the third period, Pavel Datsyuk scored on the power play again from Drew Dali and Patrice Bergeron, and then... The Islanders scored, made it 3-1, and then Pavel Datsyuk completed his hat-trick uh, in an empty net from Jason Spezza and Eric Carlson. And finally, Sam Gagne managed to score 24 seconds later from Jason Spezza and Patrice Bergeron, and 5-1 was the final score. There was a fight in the third period between Jason Spezza again, wow, and Zabinic Mikalik. Uh, Spezza's got a little bit of fight into, uh, into him. Memorable game for Pavel Datsyuk. He had a hat trick, as we saw. All right, and we are uh, staying at home for a little bit. We are going to host the Bruins here in a few days. Matt Niskanen's point streak ended at 15 games. He was held scoreless against Edmonton, and his assist streak ended at 10 games. Yarmir Jagger extends his point streak to 13 games with a goal against Colorado. And Sidney Crosby extends his point streak to 17 with an assist in that same game. Oh, Matt Martin is suspended with the Islanders. He's going to miss seven games. Strong game for Ilya Kovalchuk. He had three goals and an assist against Phoenix. All 
All right, so we are going to be hosting the Bruins. It's a little tough in Boston this season. They are 23, 30, and 5. That's good for 11th in the East. We are 3 0 against the Bruins this season. Oh, look at that. They're sending Ryan. Miller. Look at that. Oh, he's struggling. Ryan Miller, you're struggling. I'll, I let you out of town at the right moment. So, Ryan Miller in net for Boston. We are going with Brian Elliott. And we won 7 nothing, nothing to help poor Ryan Miller. He's going to retire at this point, at this rate. All right, so we outshot them 47 to 17. Ryan Whitney was the first star. He had a goal and an assist. Alex Pietrangelo was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Drew Doughty was the third star with two assists. 18,132 people in attendance for this game. Nobody scored in the first, then we scored four in the second. So Matt Unwick from Joe Thornton and Brooks Like, then Alex Pietrangelo scored short handed from Ryan Whitney and Mike Fisher, then Nika, Nikita Filatov from Mike Fisher and Eric Carson, and finally Marion also scored his 10th from Drew Doughty and Alex Pietrangelo, and it was 4 0 cents after two. And then we continued the massacre in the third period. Eric Carlson scored his 20th on the power play from Alexander Redlov and Joe Thornton. And then Ryan Whitney from Alexander Redlov and Patrick Eves. And finally, Marion Osa from Drew Doughty and Pavel Datsuk. 7 0 is the final score. That was a one sided affair for sure. Ryan Getzlaff has a strong game. He had a hat trick against the Wild. And now we are playing the very next day in Toronto. So, oh, there's already only four games left here in February. So looks like it might be another shorter video. Maybe I'm not rambling enough or something. All right, so Toronto is now 28, 27, and 3. Now, remember, they fired Pat Burns because they weren't playing well enough. And it looks like Mike Sullivan turned things around a little bit. And Toronto is now ninth in the East within striking distance for a playoff spot. We are 3-0-1 against the Leafs this season. That is more than likely going to be our last game against them. Right, so Brian Elliott in net for us, Jonas Gustafsson in net for Toronto. And we won 3 0. We. 50 uh, 15 was the shot lead in our favor in that one. Gustafsson was the first star of the game despite the loss. He made 47 saves. Eric Carlson was the second star with an assist. And Mike Fisher is trying to raise his trade value uh, by getting an assist as the third star. Right, so nobody scored in the first. Then in the second period, we have Sam Gagne scoring his fifth from Chris Kelly and Eric Carlson. Then in the third period, Matt Stajan from Mike Fisher and Martin Anzel. And then Petrus Bergeron scored in an empty net from Zedan O'Shara. 3 0 is the final score. All right, Petteri Nakalinen is back in the lineup in Phoenix after serving his suspension. All right, Alex Ovechkin has a strong game. He, oh yeah, he had three goals and three assists against Buffalo, so it is indeed a strong game. Yaromir Jagr extends his goal streak to five games with two goals against Chicago. And that was 14 straight with a point for him. Sidney Crosby extends his point straight to 18 games. In that same game, he got a goal and two assists. And that was eight straight with an assist for him. Somebody gotta stop the pens. Right, Gregory Campbell is not suspended in Florida. And strong night for John Tavares, so 20 year old. So he's uh, starting to get pretty good, and he got a four assist game against Florida. Yarmir Jagger extends his point streak to 15 games with an assist against the Capitals. And Sidney Crosby extends his point streak to 19 games with a goal in that same game. But his assist streak ended at 8 games because he did not get an assist. Alright. 
Vancouver's Anders Eriksson is suspended. He's going to miss two games. And the trade deadline is coming. So, yeah. Alright, so we are hosting the Florida Panthers uh, here. Florida's doing all right. They are 33 20 and 6. That's good for 7th in the East. And we are 1 0 against Florida this season. Jacob Markstrom is going to be in net for the Panthers. We are going to Brian Elliott. And we won 7 0. Another shout out for Elliott. We outshot the Panthers 56 to 13. Matt Onwick was the first star of the game. He had two assists. Joe Thornton was the second star with a goal and two assists. And Patrick Eves was the third star with two assists. 16,301 people in attendance for this game. And the scoring started in the first with Zdeno Shara scoring from Martin Ansel and Eric Carlson, then Joe Thornton from Ryan Whitney and Matt Unwick, and it was 2 nothing Sands after 1. Uh, there was a fight between Zdeno Shara and Tanner Glass. Uh, then in the second period, Jason Spezza scored on the power play from Eric Carlson and Joe Thornton. Then Alexander Redlove from Patrick Eves and Chris Kelly, and then Jason Spezza from... Mike Fisher and Patrick Eves, and it was 5 0 Suns after two. Then finally, in the third period, Drew Dotty scored from Petrus Bergeron and Pavel Datuk, and Marian Rosa from Joe Thornton and Matt Unwick. 7 0. Yeah, another one sided affair here. Datuk is day to day. Right, and then we're gonna go play one game on the road. Yarmir Jagger extends this point straight to 16 games with an assist against San Jose. And Sidney Crosby extends this point straight to 20 games with a goal in that same game. Seku Koivu has obtained 500 assists in his career with an assist against Tampa Bay. So Seku Koivu. 36 years old, he's a one-star player playing in Phoenix now. David Booth keeps fans on their feet all night. He had three goals and two assists against Dallas. Pretty good game. Leo Komarov is back from suspension in Toronto. All right, so we have two games left here in February, and they are back-to-back, -back, so we're going to play in Buffalo and then go back home to play the Flyers. So Buffalo uh, so Buffalo uh, has been doing a little bit better than they have. I mean, it's still not great, but it doesn't look as grim as it looked uh, for a few seasons. Uh, they are 25, 29, and 5. That's good for 10th in the East. And we are 3-1 and one against Buffalo this season. Alright, so Brian Elliott in net for us. Tim Thomas in net for Buffalo. Oh, we lost 43 in overtime. Look at us. It was in the shootout. Uh, we outshot Buffalo 43 to 35. Patrick Marlowe was the first star of the game. He had a goal and an assist. Petrus Bergeron was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Jason Pommenville was the second, uh, the third star, sorry, with two goals. All right, so Alexander Redlov uh, opened up the scoring in the first. That was his 20th of the season from Petrus Bergeron and Brooks like. Then Buffalo tied the game, but Petrus Bergeron gave us the lead again from Drew Doughty and Chris Kelly, and it was 2 to 1 cents after 1. Then in the second period, Alex Petrangelo scored from Eric Carlson and Jason Spezza. It was 3 to 1, but then uh, Jason Pommenville scored twice to tie the game at 3. Nobody scoring in the third period. Nobody scored in overtime. And uh, 
and Drew Staff Stafford scored, then Eric Carlson scored, and then Thomas Vanek scored, so... Buffalo won that one. Uh, Patrick Eliash has achieved 900 points in his career, uh, many of them acquired with the Ottawa Senators. So Eliash had two assists in that game against the Ducks. So 34 years old, Patrick Eliash, still a three-star player. <clears throat> Yarmir Jagger extends his point streak to 17 games with a goal and two assists against Carolina. And Sidney Crosby extends his point streak to 21 games with two assists in that same game. And Sergei Mozyakin has a memorable game. He had a hat trick against Phoenix. Alright, so we are about to host the Flyers in what is going to be the last game we play in February. So the Flyers are 35, 22, and 4. That's good for 6th in the East. And we have not beaten the Flyers so far this season. We are 0-1-1. So that's a team that's giving us problems. Alright, so they're going to Sergei Bobrovsky in net. Uh, oh, he has 10 shutouts. That's pretty good. And we are going to Antiniemi. Oh, we managed to win that one. 2-1. to one. So, Oh, the shots were also pretty close. So we outshot Philadelphia 38-32. to 32. Eric Carlson was the first star of the game. He had two assists. Sergei Bobrovsky was the second star with 36 saves. And Ben Holmstrom was the third star with an assist. 19,635 people in attendance for that game. So... Uh, in the first period, we have Alex Pietrangelo scoring his 15th on the power play from Eric Carlson and Jason Spezza. 1-0 Sands after 1. Then in the second, we have Nikita Filatov scoring his 5th from Eric Carlson and Patrick Eves. 2-0 at that point. Then the Flyers scored, made it 2-1. And nobody scored in the rest of the second. Nobody scored it in the third. There was a fight between Zdeno Oshar and Ben Holmstrom. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So we won that 2-1. to one. Finally beat the Flyers this season. Uh, Alright, so Peter Vrana is available, not picking him up. Yarmir Jagger's point streak ended at 17 games. It was held scoreless against Toronto, but Crosby did get an assist in that game, so he is now up to 22 games with a point. Anders Eriksson is back from suspension in Vancouver. Alright, so open ice leads to a productive night for V. Leno, who had four assists against St. Louis. Pretty good. John Tortorella is under fire as the coach of the Lightning. Um, yeah, Lightning is not doing good at all. They are 17, 34, and 11. Uh, it must be fun to uh, it must be fun to be watching the press conferences in Tampa Bay this this season. That's all I'm gonna say. All right. All right, so today's a trade deadline, and we have one proposal from the Devils. So they want to trade us Mark Fraser for Martin Anzol. Yeah, no. All right, I am not going to initiate any trades. I'm going to finish the season with Mike Fisher on the lineup. He's probably going to be more effective for me than whoever I'm going to get. Uh for my playoff run so I guess we're not trading today now there might be other tra trades for other teams but we are not gonna be trading nope nobody traded at the trade deadline all right so that all right and the players of the month were Sidney Crosby and Corey Crawford not surprised to see Crosby get it he had points in you know every game he played so probably well deserved all right so we are still 
uh, first in the East, and we are eight points ahead of Pittsburgh at this point, and Pittsburgh played two more games than us now, so we're looking pretty good to finish first, but of course it's not over, there's gonna be a pretty busy month of March, March is pretty much always one of the busiest months of the season, so we're gonna be pretty busy there. Um, let's see in the west what it's looking like all right so in the west we have chicago and i'm colorado nashville detroit los angeles minnesota and san jose so yeah i don't think it's gonna change i mean the order of the teams that are there it might change but yeah there's a nine point gap here between ninth and eighth so i'm not expecting a lot of change there Oh, and Phoenix is now finally not the worst team in the league anymore. It is now the Carolina Hurricanes. All right, now we're going to take a look at our stats. I have a feeling that we've kind of slowed down there. All right, so we have Spezza with 91 points in 62 games, then Thornton 71 and 62, Datsyuk is 64 and 60, Carlson is 62 and 59, Bergeron 61 and 60, then it drops to 45 and 51 for Radulov. So Radulov is almost a point per game still. So. Then Osa 40 and 62, and then you know it just goes down from there that's pretty interesting so red love is doing pretty good nice pickup for me and let's take a look yeah, did crosby pass uh spedza now i hope not so avichkin is first in goal scored with 41 spedza is fourth with 34 spedza is first in assist with 57 and then Jagger passed Spezza in points. He has now 92 points, Spezza has 91, and Crosby has 86. Uh, we do have two more games than them to play, though. So hopefully in those extra two games, we're going to pick up a lot of points for Spezza. All right. So again, we're doing pretty good. Not uh, anything major to worry about or anything like that so uh, I already saved my game uh, so all there is left to do is to thank you for tuning in and if you've liked the video please feel free to like subscribe share comment all of that good stuff and until I roll this game again I'll see you guys next time thank you